The city of Bengaluru or Bangalore is facing an unprecedented water crisis. Temperatures are soaring up to 35 degrees in the middle of the day, which is unheard of and never been experienced at this time of the year. There's no water in most homes and at the beginning of the summer this is likely to continue and get a lot lot worse. It's being compared to situations in California or parts of South Africa where severe drought was experienced. Let me tell you how bad the situation is right now. As of the 6th of March, all of the districts occupied by Bengaluru Urban have been declared drought hit. There are some really fancy buildings where apartments are worth crores of rupees that have absolutely no water at this point. The government has intervened uh, and capped the cost of tankers, has seized all the water tankers because apparently the water tankers had hiked their prices and they were only delivering water to the very fancy housing societies and the people who really needed the water were not getting water at all because it was too expensive and it was being diverted. So now the government has seized all unregistered water tankers and is diverting them to what it says are areas where people really need. Upscale housing societies have hiked their maintenance bills in order to make water available because they're having to buy such a lot of water. Uh, apparently one uh, housing society has actually asked its uh, you know people to use disposable cutlery and use wipes to wash their hands and faces in order to save water. Buildings are turning off taps in the middle of the day. But really the problem is really, really bad for the poor who don't have water to take a bath, who don't have water to drink. Uh, water that is being drawn from bore wells is not supplied to them. Schools might also temporarily have to shut because... There's no water, in, there's no running water in those schools and they can't give school water uh, to the students who are there. Now, what has the Karnataka government done? They have allocated 550-odd crore rupees to solve the problem. As of the 7th of March, water tankers' owners have to register their water tankers with the government and officials have been uh, now also said to utilize, have been told to utilize empty milk tankers to actually transport water. The prices have been capped now from 600 to 700 rupees for a tanker. They've really gone up to about 2,000 rupees. The city has also now banned the use of Kaveri River water for washing your cars, for gardening, for construction, for water fountains and road construction. Uh, there's a fine if you use that water for the wrong reasons. Borewell water might be used for these things and that of course is causing a lot more problems as well. The civic body is also now digging more bore wells and going deeper in 58 areas in order to get water to people. How did it get to this point? And this, I want to point out, is a problem that is personal for me because it's been brewing in the city of Bengaluru for a really, really long time. And successive governments have ignored the problem and have refused to invest the time and the energy that's needed to find the solution. Now, let me tell you why this problem is happening. Construction, construction, construction. If you if you go to Bangalore, you will see construction as far as the eye can see. Now, they're adding layouts, they're adding tech parks, they're adding these skyscraper residential homes without any sort of plan as to where the water will come from for any of these places. Remember, Bengaluru is not on the side of the ocean. It's not sitting next to a massive water body. Even the Kaveri water, the where, where, which is one of the places where Bangalore gets its water, is 100 kilometers away. So it doesn't have a proper solution. So let me tell you what the problems are. Obviously, massive construction. Now, since 2007, 110 villages were added to the city of Bengaluru and this includes Yalahanka, it includes uh, Mahadevpura, it includes uh, you know the RR zones, all of the tech parks that you're talking about were all added after 2007. None of these neighborhoods were given piped water. None of them were given piped water. They were told to use or they were basically just allowed to use groundwater. So they all dug bore wells and they've all been using groundwater and they're all using water tankers which is groundwater from a different place that's now being, you know, driven into the city. So what has happened effectively is that the groundwater table has now depleted. And because the groundwater has depleted, there is a huge problem. Besides which, of course, there is the lack of rain and the water has not been replenished. Remember, older parts of the city, like Jainagar, for example, that were planned earlier, pre-2007, don't have a water problem. Their groundwater is still pretty sufficient. The worst crises are being uh, felt in the IT corridors, Whitefield, Vartur, Sarjapur. These are all these new areas that are coming up for which the government has not made a plan. Remember, they don't have piped water, which is completely atrocious. Now, 
researchers from ISC Bangalore have pointed out that there has been a 1,000% increase in concretization of the city of Bengaluru and a 79% loss of water bodies in the last 40 years. Oh, now, I also want to point out to you that effectively when, you, when a city is relying so heavily on groundwater, what that effectively means, it's relying on rain. Uh, and when the rain falls from the sky, it needs sink land, which means forest areas or wooded areas or large lakes where the water has an opportunity to sink into the ground and replenish the water table. Now, as you continue to build and concretize large areas around the city, what happens effectively is that the water has no place to sink into the ground. It actually runs off and it's not replenishing the water table. So that is a massive problem. Secondly, the actually the massive lakes around which Bangalore, the man-made lakes around which Bangalore was built, or Bengaluru was built, that was meant to actually re replenish the groundwater have been drained and you've built on them. So there is no way for that water to reach the table and replenish it. Now, I'll give you an example. The city up till 1961 had 262 lakes. Do you know how many it has now? 81 lakes and those lakes are also choked with garbage and sewage and chemical waste and they are really struggling and they're not being looked after. The rest have all been claimed by the real estate cartel of the city that is draining it to build. And of course, the Bengaluru Development Authority of the BBMP they should be held responsible for handing out this land to build when it should have in fact been custodians that looked after the land. So I'm being very clear about the fact that it is the city government, the BDA, the BBMP, the state governments of Karnataka for the last 40 years. So open your internet and scroll back the last 40 years and look at every single person who has been in charge of the city of state of Karnataka has been responsible for the problem we're facing today. And these are governments across the Congress party, across the JDU, across the BJP that have not taken the steps required to solve the problem. Now the second source of water for Bangalore. And remember I said piped water that comes from the River Kaveri. Now the River Kaveri is 100 kilometers away which means the water needs to be piped and it depends on rainfall and there has been the, absolutely no rainfall in the last one year. The, uh, the monsoon has failed and so the River Kaveri also it does not have the kind of water that it should have uh, and there's not been enough rain and so that is a problem as well. Now, what does this mean for the future of the city? Now, remember the chief minister, the current chief minister, Siddharamaya, in his budget speech had said that the BWSSB, which is the Bangalore Water and Sewage Board, will actually start providing piped drinking water to the 110 villages that have not received piped drinking water since 2007. So any area that has been built after 2007 does not have piped water and they've allocated 5,500 crore rupees for that to actually put in those pipes. But with the acute rainfall shortage in, uh, you know, the Kaveri Basin, even if you pipe at this point, if there's no water, what will you pass on? So really, what Bangalore is lacking along with water at this point is political will. Political will that we continuously have not had for 40 years. In fact, the United Nations in a recent report has projected that India will be most severely actually affected by water shortage by 2050 and it places a large number of people in our country in a water scarcity area. What does the government of Karnataka need to do? Now, it is in immediate looking at bussing in or tankering in more water into the city and making sure people have water, conserving water, uh, swimming pools are going to be shut, people are not going to be able to wash their cars uh, and the usage of water is going to have to be really, really careful. But in the long term, they will have to revive the lakes. They will have to revive the drains or the, the Raj Kalves as they're called in Karnataka in Bangalore that actually drain from one lake into another lake to make sure that the water is adequately stored. They will have to insist that each of these fancy tech parks and housing societies also start now water harvesting every time it does rain so that they actually are able to store their own water or use their own water. They will have to start looking after large empty areas of land, allow them to just grow, grow trees so that they can be larger sinks so more and more water can be collected. But what it needs, like I said, is political will to solve the problem. And this is why I'm looking upset, right? All of the construction that you see happening in Bengaluru has not just come up on its own. It's not mushroomed on its own. 
code. Every single building has received permissions from the government. Every layout has received permissions from the government, generating a great deal of money in taxation and a great deal of black money for politics. So all of this growth that Bengaluru has witnessed in spite of its successful governments, not because of them, they have benefited monetarily from, but that money has not been rolled back into the city to actually come up with long-term solutions. They've chopped up all of the trees, they've taken away all of the green cover, they're constantly looking for new ways to reduce the green cover of the city, and they're constantly talking about development when they actually should be talking about sustainability. As more and more people move to Bengaluru to live there and work there, remember, Every single person in the city pays tax. They pay income tax, they pay property tax, they pay road tax, they pay GST to the state and the central government. They deserve better than having to wipe their hands instead of washing their hands and not having enough water to drink. It is not fair. The citizens of Bengaluru must demand better from their governments, city, state and centre.